a summary of the synthesis and reactions of amides. We'll talk about in this lesson, and spoiler alert, the last reaction I talk about in this lesson will be new. Everything else, though, is going to be review, similar to the previous couple lessons we've seen. So lots of review, a lot of it coming from this nucleophilic acyl substitution lesson. But again, there will be one new reaction in this lesson. Now, this lesson's part of my organic chemistry playlist. I'm releasing these lessons weekly throughout the school year. So if you want to be notified every time I post a new one, subscribe to the channel, click the bell notification. All right, so we'll start off with synthesis of amides. And as you recall, you can turn anything more reactive into anything less reactive. And the amide's kind of the bottom of the food chain. I mean, the carboxylate is lower energy, so but you can't really turn the carboxylate into much. So but the amide, you can still actually do nucleophilic acyl substitution. So but you can take anything higher and turn it into the amide. That means you can turn an acyl chloride, an anhydride, an ester, or a carboxylic acid. They can all be converted into this amide here. So if you look at the acyl halide or the anhydride, again, they don't require a catalyst. And so you can do the uncatalyzed reaction, which is just gonna be adding the appropriate amine, so to replace your leaving group with, or you could do the base catalyzed and use the corresponding amide ion, the conjugate base of the amine we're using. So, and technically you could do this acid catalyzed, but again, for the acid uh, halide or the acid anhydride, we just usually don't. Now, if you start with an ester now, now you have to do acid or base catalysis. And so for the ester, you don't have the option of just using the amine all by itself. You can use the amine with acid or use the corresponding anion. So, but you've got to do one or the other. So no just adding the amine and expecting it to work. Same thing with the carboxylic acid. You've got to do catalysis. But once again, remind yourself that for a carboxylic acid, you can't do base catalysis because simply adding base to a carboxylic acid would deprotonate it, turning it to the carboxylate, and then it's trapped down here. You're not going to be able to convert it up into an amide. But acid catalysis, so the corresponding amine with H+, appropriate acid, yeah, you could make an amide and pull that off. Cool, and that is your synthesis of amides. And the first couple reactions of amides are also right off this chart here. And we can convert our amide into the carboxylate. That is technically downhill. We'll just add hydroxide, but you're probably gonna have to heat it up pretty good as well. So, and even hotter, if you add H3O+, you can actually, this is one of our you know, uh, places on this chart where we can go uphill, it's just gonna require a fair amount of heat in the process. So H3O plus and heat will convert your amide into a carboxylic acid. So first couple reactions, amides can be converted into carboxylates or carboxylic acids. So right off this chart. So let's go take a look at the hydride reduction we saw was possible as well. All right, you might recall with amides that the reaction with lithium aluminum hydride was different than all the other lithium aluminum hydride reactions. So for most of the other carboxylic acids and carboxylic acid derivatives reacting with lithium aluminum hydride, you'd be able to add two equivalents. The first one would just replace your leaving group with an H and get an aldehyde, and then it would react with the aldehyde to get a primary alcohol. But with lithium aluminum hydride, it turns out the oxygen is a better leaving group than the nitrogen, and it is the oxygen that ultimately is going to leave here and result in an amine. And so your carbonyl carbon has now been reduced to having two hydrogens, and you get the corresponding amine with lithium aluminum hydride. And again, this was unique among all the, the LAH reactions. And finally, we're here. This is the dehydration of an amide, and this is the one new reaction from this lesson. So the dehydrating agent we're going to use in this case is thionyl chloride, and it's not the only one. They're like a phosphorus reagent, I recall, and stuff like this, but it's the one that you're most likely going to encounter if you're going to see this reaction. So if you start with a primary amide here, it turns out you can dehydrate it. You're going to lose water. You're going to lose a couple H's and the O, and actually reduce this to the corresponding nitrile. So that carbon and that nitrogen are that carbon and that nitrogen. And this is technically classed a dehydration. I'm not concerned about the mechanism. I don't think you're ever gonna see the mechanism, things of this sort, but it may be a reaction that is part of your curriculum. Now, if you found this lesson helpful, would you consider giving me a like and a share? One of the best things you can do to make sure that other students get to see this lesson as well. If you're looking for the study guide that goes with this lesson, if you are looking for practice problems on carboxylic acids and derivatives, check out my premium course at chadsprep.com. Also, I've just been steadily building up some brand new uh, final exam rapid reviews for OCHEM 2. The OCHEM 1s are already ready to go, but the OCHEM 2s, I'm releasing them as we speak. Those are also part of my premium course on chadsprep.com.